Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from actually a very sunny San Diego, even in January. Today I'm joined by Darcy Loma, who's CEO and founder of Darcy Loma Coaching and Consulting up in a eh, maybe slightly chillier Madison, Wisconsin. How are you doing, Darcy? I'm great. It's beautiful. It's snowing here today. But not inside, which is... Uh, which is all that matters. So, uh, so what we're going to talk about today is thoughtfully fit solving your people problems with confidence. So let's get straight into it, Darcy. What is this concept that you have uh, that you have uh, created? The thoughtfully fit. What does that mean? Yes, it's a leadership model that I designed after coaching thousands of hours, uh, executive coaching, team coaching, systems coaching. I started to notice that there were these patterns and these themes that kept coming up over and over again with my clients. And so I started to research and look at what were the themes. And we put up all these flip charts all over and spent a couple of years really digging deep. And we realized that there are six things that get in the way of having the impact that you want and, and really being able to uh, find the success. And that those six um, themes became the six core practices of Thoughtfully Fit. So Thoughtfully Fit is all about being able to handle yourself thoughtfully in any situation, uh, whether it's, you know, how being intentional uh, or being considerate with others. And it's a metaphor for being physically fit because mm -hmm. in order to be physically fit, you have to train and practice in the same way. If you want to handle yourself well in any situation, it takes training and practice. Yeah, and it's interesting because um, the, the concept of being intentional or being intentional. mindful or, you know, being on um, like that, they're almost kind of counterintuitive to the world we live in today because, I mean, people are very much kind of... Uh, blinkered in many ways and they're so distracted and they're so reactive that uh, I think this is a great time for people to, to take a step back and look at the whole concept of intentionality. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the core of Thoughtfully Fit is uh, where you, you identify what are my choices and, and what do I control? And I think what you're, what you're sharing, John, is a lot of times we are on autopilot and we aren't pausing to think uh, what can I do in this situation? We just react. And a lot of times it's a mm -hmm. knee-jerk reaction. It's not a very intentional or thoughtful reaction. And that is the faster pace our lives go, the more we need to pause uh, to be th intentional. Yeah, no, and I, I really I totally agree with that because I do think because of because of this world we live in where everything is instantaneous and, and instant gratification and all of that is that is that people are out of practice in, in, t in pausing and, and being intentional. So when you when you work with people, can you walk us through the the, the six steps and we'll dig into a couple of them? Mm hmm. Yes. Uh, do you want me to give you an overview of the six? Yeah, give, give us an overview and then we'll yes. just dive into it. So the of six obstacles. Here, here's the, the themes that when clients come into coaching, these are executive clients or CEOs or managers, frontline employees, six themes. Number one, there's so much to do, I can't even think. People mm -hmm. are overwhelmed. That ties to the practice and thoughtfully fit of stillness, being able to quiet the mind. When you can find stillness, you can be more creative and strategic and innovative. Second uh, obstacle, I don't always handle myself the way I'd like to. That ties to the practice of strength. Strength is all about being able to consciously choose how you show up in any situation. And it sometimes it's a heavy lift, right? If, you, if you're blindsided, it takes strength to be able to choose how you show up instead of being on uh, autopilot. Uh, third theme is I feel stuck. My clients would come into coaching sessions feeling, saying, you know, they're stuck in a job they don't like, stuck in a marriage that's not fulfilling. That ties to the practice and thoughtfully fit of endurance, which is about being able to overcome obstacles, embrace a growth mindset so that you can work through that stuckness. Those three are all internal where we get in our own way. Then the other three obstacles are external. They're in relationship with other people. So number four is um, I'd be fine if only you were different. 
right? So if, 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 oh, you know, clients would come into the coaching saying, Darcy, my boss, if only he would smile when I walk in, or if only my spouse would, uh, you know, do the dishes without me having to ask, I could be happy. That ties to the practice of flexibility, which is being able to stretch to accept others just as they are, instead of putting all this energy into trying to change them or being angry that they aren't the way you think they should be. Uh, number five is uh, I have relationships that don't work. Clients mm -hmm. coming in saying I'm, you know, I'm I'm over functioning. Um, I'm I'm uh, being walked all over. Whatever it is, relationships are out of balance, and so that's the the fifth practice is balance. And that's about being able to achieve alignment in your relationships to find the, the win-win, to be able to balance what do you want and need with what I want and need. And then the final theme is I react poorly when blindsided. Mm -hmm. Clients come in and say, oh my gosh, somebody uh, approached me in the board meeting and I got defensive and I reacted. And so that's the practice of agility, <laughs> being able to respond thoughtfully instead of reacting uh, defensively or on autopilot. No, no, those are those are fantastic. And um, let me just dive into a couple of them here. So uh, going back to one of the internal ones, the cho choosing how you show up, right? I think this is probably one of the most powerful things that, uh, you know, the powerful is tools that people have in their in their arsenal that they don't realize they don't realize how much uh, choosing how you show up can change the whole dynamics of your work and your life um, so talk to me a little bit more about that whole concept of how do you get to a, a place where you're able to choose how you show up as opposed to just letting circumstances dictate yes so at the core of thoughtfully fit there's three steps you pause think and act and that is what's going to give you the ability to uh, have a thoughtful reaction, to be able to choose how you're showing up in the moment. Um, and so uh, instead of, you know, something happens and then, and then we, we, we react. When you have strength to be thoughtfully fit, to choose how you show up, something happens, you pause in that moment, you take a breath, you think, and the think is, asking yourself a, 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 a question in that moment. Like, how do I wanna show up? What's triggering me right now? How can I stay neutral or connected? And then you act thoughtfully from that place. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you an example. I had a, a, mm -hmm. a, a client um, who was high level, big uh, stress in her, in her life professionally. She said, uh, she came in a coaching. She said, Darcy, every time I get home, I pull in the garage, I open the garage door to the house and I trip over shoes and I'm angry and the, the dinner's not ready and I, nobody's ready for soccer practice. And I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm so angry and I don't like how I'm showing up. So right. she put a, a big stop sign on her uh, uh, garage door. So when she got home and pulled in the car, that was the moment for her. She'd see that and she'd pause. Uh -huh. And she'd think, how do I want to show up when I walk through the door? What's the energy I want to bring? And she'd walk in and act differently. And what's crazy is nothing changed with her kids or her husband, right? There wasn't all of a sudden magically, you know, the house was spotless, but the energy was completely different because she was choosing how she showed yeah. up. And, and what I love about that is that idea of choice. And because, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing that people sometimes don't realize that they actually have a choice. And again, as I said, I mean, unfortunately, today, um, people seem to do things in the opposite direction. It's more like act, then pause for a moment to see what happened and then think about, Ooh, was that a good idea? So I like the way that it's the other way around, <laughs> the other way around. But I do think it's so important because we live in a world where people don't pause, they just react. And I think this is such an incredibly important thing. And especially now, if you think about it, with a lot of people, especially in a work context, being virtual and remote or whatever, it's very easy to sit there. You're not even faced with the person. You can fire off something on Slack or on email or, or even, you know, even in the chat on Zoom, or you can, you know, just go whatever. There's so many ways for you to be extremely reactive in a, in a detrimental fashion. Absolutely. And, and what I'll highlight that you're sharing, John, is the pause it doesn't need to be, uh, you know, an hour. It doesn't need to be 10 <laughs> minutes. The pause can be three breaths, taking a sip of your coffee, right? And just slowing down, giving yourself a beat, 
to be able to then think, how do I want to show up? What, what's triggering me about this? What's the obstacle? So that you can then act thoughtfully instead of reacting. Yeah, absolutely. It's that moment when you think, I can, I could say that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> exactly. And hopefully, like you said, it's not backwards. Like, oh, I said yeah, that. Yeah. And then you pause and oh. think, oh. I shouldn't have said that. Exactly. The other internal one that I find interesting is this idea of being stuck because I, it's funny, it's one I come across most to, uh, you know, when people come and ask me for advice about things. I mean, I always find that that is the one where people really feel like they're stuck and that they have no options. And sometimes when you start to show them that there actually are options, it's almost like uh, it's a revelation to them because this, this sense of being stuck is very powerful. It is powerful. And, and a lot of times when we're stuck, we don't feel like there are any choices or, mm -hmm. or maybe there's only bad choices. And so being able to have endurance and overcome those obstacles to get unstuck, one of the core uh, practices that is tied to this is embracing a growth mindset. So, you know, I'm stuck and well, I'm not, I'm not good at presenting. I'm not good at math. I'm not a runner. So I could never be healthy. I'm stuck in this body. I'm stuck in this. It's being able to, to add the word yet to it. I, I'm not yeah. a good presenter yet. I'm, I'm not a runner yet, but I can be if I choose to be and being able to uh, shift your mindset that allows you to then see what those choices are so that you can get unstuck. Mm -hmm. And I think also uh, sometimes when you help people take a quick look back on what they've achieved in their lives, because sometimes I don't think people realize what they've done and what they've achieved and the experiences that they've had and how you can actually point out to them, look, there were other occasions in your life when you probably felt stuck, but you did this and you did that and you moved your life on. Absolutely. And yes, you can point that out for others. I, I'm doing that all the time with my coaching clients. And you can also do that for yourself, right? So yeah. when you're thoughtfully fit, being able to pause in the moment and think, how have I overcome this obstacle in the past? What did I do to be able to get pet through that? And how might I apply that to this situation? Yeah. And then the other one about you have there about uh, accepting other people, you know, that flexibility piece. I think that that is so, <laughs> that's, that's so incredibly hard, especially, you know, for a lot of people who, you know, maybe the type A people who like to do things in a particular way, it's very hard for them to deal with people who are more, maybe more analytical and slower and do things in a more methodical fashion. And there's all, all you get all these conflicts often within work. And really, it's all about style. Yes. And what's interesting is the research shows that the, the highest performing teams and the strongest organizations have diverse styles. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what can create conflict and right. And so the, the key is to be able to recognize that conflict is healthy. It's good. It's going to give us a chance to explore different perspectives. And instead of embracing a mindset of you're wrong, and then you get into this toxic conflict. So with flexibility, you're accepting that someone is a different way. And, and, and instead of tolerating that difference or trying to change them, mm -hmm. you are looking at how can that viewpoint and that style help inform this decision, um, our team. So, so somebody who's a, a visionary, uh, is, is maybe frustrating to the person who's an analyst and wants all the details. And so they're like, well, you're always up in the clouds dreaming. You need to, no, that's mm -hmm. good, right? If you had a yeah. team made up of all analysts, there would be no innovation. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And sometimes what it, it, they just need to figure out the right way of working together. Maybe the visionary comes into the room virtually or otherwise, uh, paints the lovely picture in the sky and then says, OK, and then the analytic analytic people go take it from there. Uh, you know, there's ways of there's ways of organizing how you interact to actually make, you know, get the benefit of every style. But as you say, it has to be purposeful, right? It has to be purposeful, absolutely. And thoughtfully fit is all of these six obstacles, these, these hurdles that we talk about, they're all people problems. And people are your greatest asset, whether you want to you know, sell more products, whether you want to have a stronger marketing, whatever it is, it all comes down to how strong are your people on your team and your relationships. Yeah. And the last one, the one that you said is, you know, the way react, react to people, react to being blindsided. Uh, 
And I mean, I think that's that's a great one where we always love to give ourselves the get out of jail clause. As you said, it's like, oh, well, you know what I'm like. And uh, and I would say when people say that, I always go, yeah, but it's not great, though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> No, because I mean, I've had to do, I mean, I've had to do that with myself sometimes. It's like, oh, in the past that I go, hmm, you know, something, yeah, that is typical sometimes of the way you react, but it's not that great. So maybe I should actually change it. Yes. So, so right on, you know, something happens, I'm angry and I yell or somebody else uh, is angry and they shut down and stonewall. Somebody else is angry and they cry. It's being able to pause in the moment to think, okay, I'm angry how do I want to show up? How do I want to respond thoughtfully? What's making me angry? How can I remain a non-anxious presence in this moment? And then acting thoughtfully so that you slow it down, right? It always comes back to engaging your core. Mm -hmm. You get re blindsided instead of, you know, it's, it's really about shifting and making your knee-jerk reaction a, 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 a thoughtful reaction instead mm -hmm. of uh, overreacting. Yeah, and, and and like we said before, I mean, I think these are skills that people need to to learn or relearn if you've lost them, because it's not a skill that the world, unfortunately, is teaching you right now. As, as I said at the beginning, the world is teaching you that reacting immediately is great when it's not. Um, and as you said, I mean, this is this is not that complex. I mean, you're talking about really taking moments out and thinking about how many times when you do that, when you just take a moment, does the whole thing unfold completely differently than you imagined it was going to? Yes, it's and you're right. It's not complex. It's simple. The key is to be consistent and to uh, really give yourself the opportunity to train and practice on the small stuff. So when you are in line at the grocery store and somebody cuts you off, instead of you know getting angry, you pause in the moment and think, do I really want to give my energy and be angry right now? Mm -hmm. huh, no. And then you act and say, come on in. So if you keep practicing on the little stuff, you'll be set when there are big obstacles that you need to overcome. Yeah, and and um, and actually on the acceptance of people, it just reminded me of a very wise person uh, told myself, my wife once, she's um, a very well-known uh, psychology person, but she said, uh, you shouldn't get, you shouldn't get annoyed or angry when people act the way you expect them to. You should be surprised when they act differently because you say, oh, I can't believe that such and such did this. And then you, the question is, but you can believe because that's the way they always react. So why are you getting upset about it? You know, or why are you surprised because they did exactly what you expected them to do? You save your surprise for when they do something completely different. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> well, um, um, this is great. The last one I just want to touch on uh, for a moment is that idea of balance, because I do think that that is so critical to everything in your life, regarding your life and your work, regardless of what it is, you know, whether it's, it's you know, how you eat, you know, how you exercise, all those kind of things. Balance is, in, is really important, because if you go to one extreme or the other, um, you know, you tend to marginalize yourself a wee bit. Absolutely. And when your relationships are out of balance, they don't work. It's not mm -hmm. fun. And, you know, so you think about the person who um, it, it's oftentimes there's a lose win or win lose. So mm -hmm. lose win. Oh, I'm not going to say anything. I don't I don't want them to feel bad. Right. I'll lose. I'll let them get yeah. their way. That might work in the short term, but in the long term, it creates resentment and anger. Flip side is uh, you might be the one who is always going to win. You're, you're a high D on the disc profile, right? You're dominant. You have no problem saying what you need. And you've got this wake of destruction behind you from all the people who are losing. Not a long-term solution either. So really balance is about being able to find the win-win. Okay, what do you want and need? And here's what I want and need. And how do we then move forward to find that alignment? Yeah, it's funny because, I mean, we're great at doing that in a sales context, you know, between like sellers and buyers and finding that win-win. But internally, in our organizations, we're not as good as uh, coming up with win-win situations. Absolutely. And, and that's a really good point, John, because there are times where you have some relationships that are in balance or, you know, maybe in the sales. Yeah, I'm really good at mm -hmm. asking questions and, mm -hmm. and finding the win-win for this client because I want that to be a long-term relationship but you're not as good in uh, the customer service. You're like, you need to tell, give them what they yeah. want. I sold it. And that yeah. relationship is out of balance and that isn't <laughs> gonna work for the long term. 
Yeah, no, fantastic. Hey, listen, Darcy, this has been uh, fantastic. Uh, all of Darcy's information will be, will be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what your organization does. Oh, thank you. Uh, so Darcy Loma Coaching and Consulting is my organization. It's DarcyLoma.com. And we solve people problems. We're people problem experts. And we really focus on helping uh, people to figure out how to deal with those problems so that they can then spend their energy on what they do best instead of wasting energy dealing with the fallout of what happened when they didn't handle themselves thoughtfully in the first place. And I've got a book coming out on Thoughtfully Fit June 1st. Um, and okay. so if anybody wants to go deeper on that, I um, am really excited because it talks about all six of these practices in the core. Fantastic. All right, listen, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.